Roadfly.com, the internet's best resource for buyers, sellers, and owners like you. Hi, I'm Ross Rappaport with Roadfly.com. Thanks for watching this episode of Roadfly TV. Today, I've got the completely redesigned full size premium SUV from Volkswagen, the Touareg. The Touareg shares a platform with Porsche's Cayenne, which, incidentally, I just reviewed last week. I can't think of a better way to review this car than by comparing it to its far more expensive cousin. The Touareg comes in three trim levels, and our test car is actually near the bottom of the ladder. It's called a VR6 Sport, and accordingly boasts VW's acclaimed VR6 engine, which really isn't bad for an entry-level Touareg. There's a diesel V6 model in the middle, and the high end of the range has a hybrid V6 which starts around 60 grand. So there's quite a lot of variation, and I think it's fair to say that this configuration is probably the most traditional. This car costs a little over $46,000, which is almost exactly half of what the last Cayenne I tested cost. Let's have a look and see if it's more than half as good. The inside of the car seems a bit plain at first, with a much more basic layout for the controls than the Cayenne's dazzling array of buttons and switches. But that's probably a good thing since I complained about the buttons and the switches. The options that are here are executed in a much more user-friendly fashion, in particular the nav, which is way more intuitive and probably better on the whole, and the climate control, which is much simpler to operate, even though I set it at 65 degrees and inexplicably still got cooked. The VW is a good bit more practical than the Porsche as well, with better storage up front in the doors, center console, and right here. There's also a really neat glove box design, which is no fluke because VW does a really great job on this in all their cars. There's a little net for your iPod and an AC vent. And despite the Touareg's price tag, which as I've said is roughly half that of the Cayenne, this car has some things that Porsche just didn't feel like sending us. For example, a steering wheel with some actual buttons on it, a backup camera, and some cup holders that actually hold cups. Now, to be fair, this car is lacking a couple of things that generally I feel $45,000 plus cars should have, like a sunroof, or a third row of seats, or real leather seating surfaces. Fortunately, it does have a power tailgate, and the rear cargo area is huge. So is the rear seat, and this is all due to the Touareg's increased size. It's grown in length, width, height, track, and added more than an inch to its wheelbase. Despite this, VW engineers managed to address the car's main weakness, its curb weight of over 5,000 pounds. The Touareg's been put on a diet for 2011, and it's trimmed more than 400 pounds off of that curb weight. I'm really pleased to be discussing a weight loss rather than a weight gain, and I'm crossing my fingers that this becomes an industry standard. Having said that, VW and Audi have been way ahead of the curve on this one, first with their skinnier A4, and now this. The benefits of lighter weight are numerous. Better acceleration, better braking, better handling, decreased wear on things like brakes and tires, and better fuel economy. This 280 horsepower VR6 delivers 16 miles per gallon in the city and 23 on the highway with the aid of an eight-speed automatic transmission. I wouldn't call this car blindingly fast or anything, but it's certainly not slow. And with 280 horsepower and 265 pound-feet of torque, it can definitely get out of its own way on the highway. However, like most normal SUVs, it's a bit nervous at very high speeds, in contrast to the Porsche, which was absolutely rock solid, no matter how fast I was going. And that's really the difference. The Porsche comes into its own when bombing around on the highway, but the Touareg does nearly everything else in an easier, more relaxed, more easygoing and user-friendly fashion. At $46,420, including destination, this car costs essentially half of the Cayenne S I tested in my last episode, but it's far more than half the car. It may lack some standard luxury features when compared with some Japanese rivals, but let's face it, Volkswagen fans are among the most passionate in the entire automotive world and they're not going to let something like a lack of third row seats or standard leather or standard sunroof stand in the way of driving a baby Porsche with some very impressive genetics. I'm Ross Rappaport. Thanks for watching this episode of Roadfly TV. Please join our community by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Leave me some comments. I'd love to hear from you.
Roadfly.com, the internet's best resource for buyers, sellers, and owners like you.